Hello, let us solve a nozzle problem. An open steady system, uh, the particular shape of the nozzle is not important. So in this nozzle, the inlet state is specified. We know the flow velocity, temperature, pressure, etc. And the exit state, let's represent that by the actual state, we'll call it 3 and the isentropic state we'll call it 2 because the problem involves both the isentropic and actual nozzle. First, some material properties we'll need probably uh, if you use the PG model we'll need uh, for carbon dioxide the values of uh, CP, R, etc. So let's collect those numbers. Uh, we go to property tables, PG model, common gases, and for CO2, uh, carbon dioxide, yes, here it is. Uh, let's pick up the R we might need and CP we might need. And maybe we might need K also, which is one point, approximately 1.29. So let's write these values down. R, <clears throat> we saw an R value of 0 0.189. Okay, so now let's get started. Uh, of course, conservation of mass will tell us that m dot 1 and m dot 2 and 3 are equal. The same flow go passes through the system. And let's look at the energy equation. Uh, energy that goes in, m dot j1. There is no other way, it's adiabatic nozzle, no other way energy is going in, must be equals m dot j3 for the actual nozzle. So this is the actual nozzle, and m dot j1 equals m dot j2 must be isentropic nozzle, because notice 2 is for our isentropic exit state. Again, from the energy equation, you've got to be able to figure this out. Suppose we write the general energy equation we know it's m dot j1 minus m dot j3 plus q dot minus w dot external no work no heat transfer steady state and thus that's how we get our conclusion both for the isentropic nozzle and actual nozzle so the nozzle equation is basically j remains constant in a nozzle so j1 equal j3 is our isentropic nozzle, sorry, the actual nozzle equation, which is H1 plus Ke1, H3 plus Ke3. We are neglecting the potential energy uh, right off, on, right off the bat. And we know that exit kinetic energy is much bigger than the inlet kinetic energy. Therefore, we can write this equation as H1 plus V1 square over, sorry, there is no V1 square here. Ke has been neglected already. So H1 equals <clears throat> H3 plus V3 squared by 2000. So therefore, that gives us an expression for V3, 2000, H1 minus H3. This is a 3. Using the PG model, we know and enthalpy difference is given by Cp, T1 minus T3. And where do you get that formula? Go to table J and we have a formula sheet. Print that out. Keep that. That's very handy. They will find the PG model and the enthalpy difference formula. You can pick it up from there. When you substitute the number 2000, Cp value we already picked up 0 0.846. And the temperatures are given 1500 was the inlet temperature and 1400 was the exit temperature and that turns out to be 411 meter per second. Okay, so we figured out what is the exit velocity at the end of the nozzle. Uh, <clears throat> now, to, to get the entropy equation correctly, think about it, uh, we can just again use our physical balance physical idea, m dot s1 is the entropy that is entering the system with the mass flow. 
there is no heat coming in. So if we, if there was heat coming in, there will be something like a term like this entropy coming in, but nothing is coming in like that. And entropy can be generated in the system's universe. If we have a large enough boundary that will capture all sorts of entropy generation. So this is on the entropy plus side. And that to maintain steady state, the entropy must be carried away by the flow at the same rate. So basically, this becomes our energy equation. So for the actual nozzle, nozzle the S exit state is 3 and inlet state is 1. So instead of E, we should write down 3 here. So there you have it. Then we need to find what is M dot and what is S3 minus S1. This is our task now. So what is M dot? M dot is rho AV. Now at the exit, we, they provided us the exit area, so therefore we can use that. And density by ideal gas equation will be P over RT. Remember PV equals RT, rho equals P over RT. So that's our density, area, and velocity. If we substitute all the known quantities, pressure at exit was given as 100 kPa. R value we picked up 0 0.189. Temperature at the exit is 1400 Kelvin. Area is 10 centimeters square, which is centimeters square is so many meters square. And finally, the velocity we already found 411. If we substitute, if we calculate these numbers, we'll get 0 0.155 kg per second. So we found the mass flow rate. Now, to get the entropy <coughs> difference, we get S3 minus S1 equals Cp ln T3 over T1 minus R ln P3 over P1. Again, from where we get it, uh, the table J, the equation sheets. So if we just substitute the numbers here, this is Cp, ln, T3 is 1400, T1 was 1500, R is 0 0.189, ln of P2 is 100. Okay, so that's what we get for the entropy change and that becomes a uh, negative 0 0.058 plus 0 0.13 anyway so substituting these s dot gen equals m dot s3 minus s1 becomes 0 0.0113 kilowatt per Kelvin. So there we have it. We found the entropy generation rate in the system. Okay, now for the last part of the problem, we would like to know what would be the exit velocity if the nozzle were isentropic. So now <coughs> we will apply the energy equation between state one and state two, the isentropic state. The flow energy remained constant so therefore, H1 plus Ke1 equals H2 plus Ke2. Again, we'll neglect this. And we, we get back a result P2 equals the same way we did before, 2000 Cp T2 minus, T, sorry, T1 minus T2. It comes from this equation. So... Essentially, we can find the velocity if we know the isentropic exit temperature. <clears throat> and how do we do so? Isentropic exit temp temperature can be found if you recall that the isentropic relation for a perfect gas will give us the following equation, P2 over P1 to the K minus 1 over K. Once again, where do we get that? We get those kind of relationship from table J. Uh, the formula sheet, 
And if you go down, if you find the, the perfect gas model, and you will notice that it will give us the isentropic relation, various forms of it. And since you know the pressure ratio and we want to find the temperature ratio, so this would be the perfect equation to use. Again, they come from, by setting delta S zero, we, we develop this relationship. So if we use this, then T2 becomes equal T1, which is 1500, and P2 is 100 by 200, and K had been picked up 1.29 over 1.29, and that turns out to be 1283 Kelvin. So therefore, V2, after you substitute this, becomes 605 Point nine meter per second. <clears throat> anyway, now that we have solved the nozzle problem, it's instructive to draw the nozzle on a TS diagram. So I'm going to just show you uh, how the actual and ideal nozzle will look on a TS diagram. So irrespective of the material, I, how do you figure out ideal gas lines? Uh, I'm sorry, if it is PC model, we know there'll be a knee-shaped diagram, but generally in the superheated vapor re region, the constant pressure lines look like this. So if this is the pressure equals 200 kPa line, we know that the 100 kPa line will be under it, just like in a PC model. So this is how an ideal gas or perfect gas TS diagram will look like for constant pressure lines. So let's say this is our state one, we already showed that at state two entropy, will, sorry, state three entropy will increase, but two is the isentropic one. Temperature drops from 1500, recall this is 1500 Kelvin, and this we just calculated to be 14, <coughs> 1283 Kelvin. So this is our isentropic line, and for non-isentropic case, the temperature was higher. If you recall, it was 1400, somewhere here. As you can see, for the non-isentropic case, entropy has increased, and this is how the nozzle diagram looks on a TS diagram. So we'll stop here, and we use a separate uh, solution using test calc to make sure we got the correct answer.